In a post-apocalyptic world infested with zombies, children also need to learn how to protect themselves. Watching the approaching zombies, the little boy Dylan was visibly panicked. Max, seemingly calm, picked up his shotgun. The zombies drew closer, but the gun jammed and couldn't be fired. However, Max didn't choose to run away because he didn't want to lose face in front of Dylan. As the zombies closed in, Dylan kept shouting from the side. Just when the situation became increasingly tense, a loud roar echoed from the sky. Their first reaction was to get down. A plane whizzed past them and crashed straight into the nearby forest, ripping the zombies behind them into two pieces with its propeller. Having narrowly escaped, the two brothers quickly decided to leave. Curiosity led them to the crash site, where thick smoke billowed. Scattered around were some cardboard boxes with faintly visible text. Take what you need, leave what you don't. They didn't have time to carefully examine the boxes as the crashing sound attracted many zombies. The two kids didn't want to linger and prepared to leave. However, a zombie appeared on the road ahead. Although Max had no experience, his sense of responsibility urged him to step forward. He then realized that his submachine gun was jammed. Behind the zombies are also gradually approaching Max was also a bit panicked hands trembling ready to fight with the butt of the gun. Just then, the zombies' heads split in two. Max looked ahead and the dense fog dispersed, revealing a stunning face that left the two boys dumbfounded. It was Alicia, beautiful and capable. Alicia said, we're here to help. Quickly, take shelter inside. The two boys had never seen anyone kill zombies like Alicia did. The helicopter blades in her hands were like reaping blades, and her domineering posture earned the admiration of the two boys. Alicia confronted another zombie and sent it flying. Fear the Walking Dead Season 5 had officially arrived. The people piloting the plane that had come here were Morgan and the others. They had come here to rescue someone named Logan but were forced to crash land due to mechanical issues. Alicia was the first to regain her senses and her priority was killing zombies to buy time for the others. Due to the plane's tilt, Morgan was hanging upside down, unconscious, until the two boys woke him up. Just then, a zombie entered the cabin. Morgan quickly shielded the children behind him, but the zombie pounced on him. Morgan struggled to hold the zombie's neck. John who had awakened, shot the zombie. The two boys asked, who are you and what are you doing here? We're here to help. Are you with Logan? Morgan asked. The two boys didn't know Logan. The situation with Luciana was grim. A steel pipe had pierced through her shoulder. Morgan held her wound to prevent excessive bleeding and comforted her, urging her not to think negatively. Morgan then asked Dylan to help hold down Luciana's wound while he went out to assist Alicia in killing zombies. At this point Alicia has killed her eyes no zombies can block her slash and almost chopped Morgan. Morgan reminded Alicia of her hand. Alicia then notices that her palm is cracked, obviously cut by the weapon in her hand. She's not the same girl she was when she was pouting and talking about pain. Zombies began to approach from all directions again. Alicia asked Morgan, how far are we from the person we're supposed to rescue? Morgan replied, we're about 15 miles off. Despite their dire situation, Morgan remained determined to reach their destination and save the person in need. Alicia didn't say anything and once again took up her weapon. She can't rest now. She has to buy time for her teammates. Soon after, Logan's voice came through Morgan's radio, desperately calling for help. The situation on the other end seemed highly critical, but then, they lost contact, leaving Morgan even more anxious. Just as they finished off a wave of zombies, another group of zombies approached from a distance. Morgan called Alicia back. As the team's top combatant, she had to buy time for her teammates. Alicia began hammering long nails into the ground, a tactic they had learned to kill zombies. After driving in five or six nails, the zombies were almost upon them. Alicia, experienced from countless battles, faced the scene with numbness. She switched the helix to her left hand and Morgan stood ready. Every zombie that approached was tripped by the ropes, greatly reducing their pressure. Their task was to deliver headshots to the zombies. Meanwhile, John brought Naomi and Althea out from the cockpit. Naomi immediately assessed Luciana's condition, and Althea's first priority was finding her camera. However, a zombie lunged at Althea from behind ferociously biting her. Althea was unable to penetrate the zombie's helmet, and it was only because of the zombie's helmet that Althea escaped with her life. Finally Althea pushed the zombies over a steel pipe. Althea then grabbed a video camera to film the strange zombies. John also brought a saw, attempting to cut through the steel pipes. Outside, Alicia and Morgan coordinated to kill the zombies. At one point, while Alicia killed a zombie, she fell onto a protective net. The sign says beware of high radiation areas. It seemed they had arrived at a special place. After a few minutes,
The zombies killed by Alicia and Morgan had piled up into a small hill, breathing heavily. Alicia looked into the distance as more zombies continued to approach. Their energy was severely depleted. Fortunately, Luciana was successfully rescued as well. They could only work together to fight their way out. In the ruins, Althea found Alicia's specialized weapon. Without hesitation, Alicia assigned tasks. I'll clear the way. Morgan cover the left. John cover the right. And the others protect Luciana from harm. The two children were in the middle. In Alicia, it was as if they saw shades of Madison. But she was more decisive and courageous. Alicia took a deep breath. The battle was about to begin. In season 4 of Fear the Walking Dead, it was mentioned that Luciana helped fulfill Clayton's dying wish. Clayton also gave Luciana the address of a factory where he stored his supplies. In the final stage, Morgan led them to find this factory and prepare to establish a survival base there. They used the resources inside to specifically aid people surviving in the apocalypse. One day, Morgan received a distress call from a person named Logan, who claimed that they were heavily surrounded by zombies and in urgent need of help. However, the location was very far away, so they had to travel by plane. Unfortunately, the plane malfunctioned and they were forced to make an emergency landing in a forest, resulting in Luciana getting severely injured. Althea immediately sent a message to Victor, who was at the base, informing him to come and rescue them by piloting the plane. The location of the plane was inside one of the videotapes. The landing is also full of weirdness, with zombies far outnumbering the rest of the place. There's also a sign for high-intensity radiation. There were even zombies wearing seemingly impenetrable armor. Despite the grim situation, Morgan insisted on proceeding to the destination to rescue the survivors. Under Alicia's command, they prepared to fight their way through the zombie horde. Just as they were preparing for the battle, a van suddenly rushed out from a distance, knocking down two zombies before stopping in front of them. To their surprise, the driver turned out to be a girl who appeared to be 15 years old. Max said, this is my sister. They quickly got on the van and left the area. During the journey, Annie mentioned that although the number of zombies here was high, it was the least of their troubles. She warned them that they had no idea where they had ended up. Alicia and Althea also had serious expressions, as they noticed some peculiarities in the area. Persuaded by Morgan, Annie drove them to their intended destination. However, along the way, they encountered a bizarre scene that Annie seemed unfazed by, while the others were astonished. On the road, not only were zombies restrained with the intestines of other zombies, but the heads of zombies were also hanging from the trees. The mouths of the zombies were opening and closing, as if warning people not to set foot in this place. It was truly eerie. Annie claimed she didn't know who did this, as such situations had occurred in many places. Alicia and Althea dealt with the zombies, and the group continued moving forward. After a two and a half hour journey, they arrived at their destination, a truck stop. Alicia glanced inside and saw that it wasn't surrounded by zombies as Logan had claimed. After opening the gate and entering, Alicia knocked on the door, but there was no response. Although the house was well stocked with supplies, they couldn't find a single person. For now, they had to tend to Luciana's wound. Morgan also found a radio and excitedly called Logan repeatedly, informing him that they had arrived. But there was no response. Fortunately, there were some basic medical supplies available here. After inspecting the surroundings, Alicia said to Morgan, There's dust everywhere. It's been a long time since anyone has been here. Something is very wrong. The three kids also sensed that something was amiss, and Annie realized the unusual situation. Instructing her two brothers to grab some supplies and leave quickly, Morgan tried to persuade the kids to come back with them, but they completely ignored him. Their priority now is to fix Luciana's wound. Luckily, Naomi's expertise was strong and she was able to perform the minor surgery without any problems. What they didn't know was that Logan, the man they were trying to rescue, had arrived at the jeans factory and had expertly unlocked the combination lock on the steel door, wearing a truck driver's hat. Logan appeared familiar with the place. Meanwhile, Morgan continued calling Logan on the radio, hoping for a response. Finally, Logan's voice came through the other end, an excited Morgan said, We were worried about you. Where are you? We'll come find you. However, Logan replied, I'm with my people, and we're watching your people. Simultaneously, Victor and Charlie returned to the base only to discover it had been occupied by someone else. Logan continued, saying, The truck you were driving had a C and an L logo. C stands for Clayton, the person who gave you the address. L stands for me. Clayton and I were partners, but I'm not as generous as Clayton. Helping others only causes trouble. Logan added. Morgan asked Logan why he led them to such a distant place. To which Logan stated, 
I want to reclaim what's rightfully mine, but I don't want it to come to bloodshed. Alicia, taking the microphone, expressed her frustration. We almost died flying that plane to save you, and you've taken over our home. Logan merely scoffed at their words. Alicia's emotions reached a boiling point. The group didn't give Victor a hard time. They were ordered to leave immediately, with all their boxes thrown out. At night, Alicia was out killing zombies by herself. She needed to let off steam. Morgan came to console her. Alicia said, We almost died today. If that pipe had been one inch off, Luciana would be dead. We risked our lives to save someone, and they took our home. The kids have distanced themselves from us too. My mother gave her life for me to be here, not for me to die saving others. Morgan replied, If all we care about is eating and sleeping, then what's the point of being alive? If we're alive, we should do something meaningful. I won't give up. Logan doesn't need our help. I'll keep looking for those kids and help them. We've all killed people, and helping others can make up for our mistakes. He added, Alicia says it's just too hard. Without a home, Sarah and the others had no choice but to drive the vehicle into the wilderness. Victor found the videotape Althea mentioned, which revealed the location of the plane. He believed that bringing Morgan and the others back would enable them to reclaim the factory. As Victor watched the tape alone in the armored vehicle, he saw someone that terrified him. The place where the plane was stored had a connection to Daniel, and Victor shook his head, hesitating to continue searching for the plane. On a rainy night in the apocalypse, Althea found a zombies wearing armor nailed to the ground. Curious, she decided to open the helmet to see what was underneath, only to reveal a plain and pale face. Althea kills the zombies with a knife. In the daytime, Althea noticed the unique attire of the zombies and thought she could capture something interesting. Indeed, the armor worn by the zombies had a remarkably distinct material that even zombies found difficult to bite through. Additionally, Althea discovered some paper materials on the zombies. After completing her filming, Althea quickly took out her walkie-talkie and contacted Morgan to share her findings from the trip. Just then, a dark figure approached Althea from behind. Althea was electrocuted and fell to the ground. The figure was also wearing a suit of armor. Meanwhile, Victor, watching the recorded footage, discovered that the plane he was searching for was located at Daniel's place. The following morning, Victor opened the recording device and left behind some final words. He intended to go alone to find Daniel and borrow the helicopter. However, the enmity between Victor and Daniel might lead to a fatal outcome for Victor. Without alerting Sarah and the others, Victor set out on his own. The audience familiar with Victor knows that he used to be a selfish person who would never put himself in danger for others. But now, he has changed. He is willing to take risks for his friends. Victor arrived at the described location in the recording and found it filled with roadblocks, clearly intended to fend off zombies. Just as he reached the entrance, a small cat ran toward him, followed by his zombies. Before Victor could take action, the zombies tripped on a spiked obstacle, which pierced its head. Soon after, Victor heard the sound of a rifle being loaded behind him. Victor raised his hands without turning around. Knowing that Daniel was the one holding the gun, he said, I know that if you see my face and hear my voice, you might shoot without hesitation, but can we talk first? He then turned around and confirmed that it was indeed Daniel. Daniel didn't show any particular animosity towards Victor and allowed him to come inside for a conversation. Once inside, Victor was amazed to see various modes of transportation filling the place. Daniel asked why Victor had come and what he wanted from him. Victor mentioned that he heard Daniel had a small plane and he wanted to borrow it. Hearing that Victor knew about it from Althea, Daniel understood how Victor had found his location. Victor explained that his friends were in danger and needed the plane for rescue. Daniel laughed and asked if it was Madison and the others who were in trouble. Victor's expression turned sad, and he replied that Madison was already dead. Daniel's smile vanished instantly. Victor continued, saying that Nick was also dead, but Alicia was alive and needed rescue. Daniel started laughing again and said, why don't you tell the truth? In Daniel's eyes, Victor was a selfish and deceitful person, always acting in his own interests. On the other side, John arrived at the location where the plane went down, searching for Althea. Besides the wreckage, even the armored zombies were nowhere to be found. Even the weapons and ammunition inside the plane wreckage were taken. It was evident that someone had taken Althea. They divided their tasks to search for her. Morgan and Alicia prepared to explore the northern region, while John returned to the truck stop to search the southern area with Naomi, Luciana who was injured, stayed at the truck stop and maintained contact with Victor. Soon, Morgan and Alicia encountered an obstacle on the road. Three vehicles blocked their way, with a sign saying danger. 
Stay away from high radiation zone, they didn't dare to enter without caution, Alicia noticed a strange vehicle with some residual heat on the hood, making them alert, but there's no one around, there was only one gap in the distance, and that was a path, they followed the path, and soon they split up to investigate the situation, after walking for a few minutes, Morgan came across a surprising scene, two zombies were attracted by a crow inside a cage, quietly, Morgan approached and took down the first zombie with a stick. As he prepared to deal with the second one, his leg was caught by a thrown weapon, causing him to fall alongside the zombie. Suddenly, a foot kicked the zombie away, and then a gunshot rang out. With a gun pointed at Morgan, it was a woman in protective gear. She ordered Morgan to strip off all his clothes. Confused, Morgan looked at her, puzzled by her actions. The woman put the gun away and removed what was hanging on the zombie's bodies. Seeing that Morgan didn't remove his clothes, she took out the gun again, however, Alicia leaped onto the woman from a distance, pressing the barrel of her weapon against the woman's shed. Alicia asked Grace where Althea was. Grace says I don't know what you're talking about but I can make sure you lose one less friend. Grace informed them that not far from there, a reactor had melted down, and the people who went to fix it all died. The zombies with the cylindrical devices attached to them were the workers who were repairing the reactor. They carried some dangerous particles. Perhaps some particles had already gotten onto Morgan, and he needs to clean up. The method of decontamination involved taking a special shower, ensuring that every inch of skin was cleansed. Grace also prepared a set of clothes and shoes for Morgan. Alicia also learned about this cylindrical radiation measuring device and saw that zombies wearing this thing must stay far away. Alicia asked Grace if it was her who set up the zombies to block their way on the road. Grace replied, I only put up signs. When you encounter something eerie like that, it's best to stay far away. 